Welcome to the class of 2024, our sophomore students and their families to our high school to college program presented by the Office of School Counseling. My name is Jerry Buckley. I'm the director of the office. Uh, we appreciate you being with us today, and we're going to go through some important information for the sophomore year. On our first slide, we talk about our sophomore appointment, the college readiness appointment, where we'll be meeting with our sophomores within the next month. Uh, there's a number of different things we cover with them. Number one is reviewing their grades and progress reports in their current classes. We also review specifically their PSAT results from October. We take a look at their four-year plan and also their activity sheet, looking at their classes potentially for next year and their senior year, as well as the activities they've been involved with the Bishop County and maybe suggest some things they can do junior and senior year as well. We talk about the SAT and ACT, getting ready to take those as juniors and seniors. We take a look at different options for college and career resources and also encourage summer visits. And hopefully as COVID is lifting uh, this summer, we would strongly encourage our students to get out and visit, visit college campuses as best they can. And then finally, we will calculate their current core and cumulative GPAs. As we get ready to, as we start our program, uh, we always want to mention the key factors that colleges will be looking at eventually when you are applying in the beginning of your senior year of high school. Number one is always going to be your grades. So your grades in all your classes, in particular your core classes, which we'll talk about in a moment, will be very important and most important on your transcript. Number two are your test scores, specifically the SAT and ACT, which we'll talk about later today. And then also your strength of schedule. So as you get ready, like we talked about, getting ready for that junior and senior year, you want to make sure you're really taking strong classes to put your best foot forward eventually when you are applying to college. As far as grades, just reminders as far as our requirements, uh, you are required to have a 2.0 cumulative grade point average in order to graduate from Bishop Kenny. So you need to make sure you know where your GPA is right now and you're far exceeding that as best as you can. Um, we always say that all students should really set as a goal for themselves an 80 average or above or a B average in all of their classes and especially their core courses. That puts them in the best position possible eventually when they are applying to college. And as it says here also, A's and B's in high school provide the best options while looking at colleges. So in January of your sophomore year right now, it's really an important time to make sure you're doing your best you can in your classes and giving yourself a great chance when you apply later on as a senior. Next slide talks about the cumulative GPA, and if you can take out hand num handout number one that we provided uh, along with the video today uh, and your packet. Handout number one shows you our cumulative GPA scale. So again, to review like we did last year with our ninth graders, uh, any type of A in a standard or college prep course is a 4.0. An honors class gets an extra half weighted point, so that's a 4.5. And then if you're taking an AP class this year, whether it be world history or computer science principles, you get an additional full weighted point. So that could, could give you potentially a 5.0 with an A in that course. And you can see how it goes down. B's are worth three, C's are worth two, and so forth. Every honors class, like I mentioned, gives you a half a weighted point, And every AP class gives you a full weighted point on your GPA. Cumulative GPA, you take your grades in all of your classes. So, for example, if you wanted to look at your freshman year, you would take all seven courses that you had, uh, take a look at your report card, um, add all your grade point up, grade points up. Excuse me. So, for example, in the example on the bottom of page one, you see religion. The student had a 92, so that was a college prep course. So that would be a 4.0. She had an English 1 honors course. She had an 89, so it's a 3.5, equal to a B in an honors course. Algebra 1 was an 83, that's a B, so forth and so on down the line. If you total that up, the student in this example had 25 and a half graded, grade points. Divide that by seven total courses, and that comes out to a 3.643 cumulative GPA. So we know um, the cum GPA may be used by private colleges and some out-of-state colleges as well. The core GPA, which we'll talk about in a moment, is what the colleges in the state of Florida focus on primarily. So again, that's cumulative GPA, and that's what's reflected on your report card every quarter and at the end of the school year. If you flip to handout number two, which is the core GPA calculation, we'll talk about how that impacts, again, college admissions specifically. So it's the same formula. 
4.0 for an A in a college prep course, 4.5 or 4.5 in an honors course, and a 5.0 in an AP course. As you can see on the slide, the five core academic areas are English, math, science, social studies, and world language. So this year when you come in with your school counselor and do your college readiness appointment, we will be evaluating where your core GPA is based on your freshman year and also taking a look in your sophomore year as well. So it's important to know ex exactly where you stand with that. If we look at example number uh, one with this student and now just pull out their core GPA at the bottom of the page, you'll see this is the same student. Their CUM GPA was a 3.643. Now we just pull out the core classes. So that student's English class, she had a B in an honors course, so that's three and a half points. An A in her math course, she had an A, excuse me, a B in her math course with a 3.0. She had a 4.0 from science and then a 3.0 in her world language class. That gave her a total of 13 and a half grade points. Divide that by four core classes. Most freshmen take four cores. So 13 and a half divided by four comes out to a 3.375. So again, same student, her cumulative GPA was a 3.643, and her core GPA is a 3.375. So that's important to make sure you know the difference and know which colleges will be looking at which GPA. And again, like I mentioned, the state universities in Florida, University of Florida, Central Florida, Florida State, and so forth, will be focused in on that core GPA. So that's why it's always very important to do as well as you can in those classes as much as possible. So, and as it says on the slide as well, it will be used by the state universities for the Bright Future Scholarship we'll talk about later on today as well, the NCAA if you want to play sports in college, and also many, many competitive colleges and universities as well. So the core GPA is definitely a key one to be aware of. Um, the next handout is transcript evaluations by other agencies. So we wanted to point that out. It kind of goes along with the core GPA, handout number three. We talk about the state university system that I just mentioned. They are looking for 18 core academic units. So if you graduate from Bishop Kenny, you would graduate with a bare minimum 16 core. And then we would always encourage you to take more than that. So, for example, if you take a third and fourth year of foreign language, that would put you at 17 and 18. If you take a fourth year of science, you could be at 19 and so forth. So it's very easy to get that, but it's important to make sure you know what you're doing. And that's an important thing to when you talk with your counselor in your meeting about what your plan is going to be for junior and senior year. In the middle of handout number three, the Bright Future Scholarship Program, we'll talk about that more specifically in a few moments, but again, you can see the core classes they are using, and that's the same thing for the NCAA as well. They are focusing on that core GPA as well as SAT and ACT scores. Handout number four is a, an example of our official transcript from Bishop Kenny, so you can see whether you apply to um, a public university, private school, whatever the case is, the information that's provided from Bishop Kenny will be the same. You can see all of your courses are listed throughout high school. The final letter grade in that course, number of credits, we, each class we offer at Bishop Kenny is a full credit course. The current schedule, eventually when you're a senior, will be listed there as well. Down the bottom left, you can see the cumulative GPA, overall rank with our total number of students in that class, and then community service hours. And again, to go back and talk about the CUM GPA, the core GPA is something that the college may pull out from that. They all may uh, interpret GPAs in a different fashion. So it's important. Again, we provide all the information, and then from there, the colleges will make the decision about how they want to interpret your grades and test scores. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to Mrs. Santorino, and she will talk specifically about our standardized testing program. Hello. On this slide, you will see at the top are listed the two college entrance exams, the SAT and the ACT. These help determine if a student is admissible to a university. Your child first took the PSAT in ninth grade. They took it again this year in 10th grade, and they will take it a third time next year as a junior. When students take the PSAT their junior year, this is how they can become eligible for the National Merit Scholarship Qualifying Test, that is the NMSQT. This is a prestigious program that only the top half of the top 1% of students all across the nation that take the test as a junior can earn the status and can advance them further in the program. Students took the PSAT in October. 
There are two different sections on the test, the evidence-based reading and writing and the math section. There is no essay on the PSAT anymore. Each section is scored out of 760 points. This is different from the SAT, which each section is scored out of 800 points. The highest total score a student can earn on the PSAT is a 1520. On the actual SAT, it is out of 1600. Recently, we went into your child's English class and we discussed and reviewed their PSAT results with them. We helped them analyze their score details and provided them with strategies and resources on how they can improve and increase their score for the next time they take it. Your child has access to their score reports online via the College Board website and we have encouraged them to share these with you. In addition, your child can also link their test scores to Khan Academy. This will give them targeted feedback as it is tailored specifically to their scores. This is a great resource as it is free and builds specific areas to strengthen any weaknesses. Plus, it can help your child on the SAT as well. Next year as a junior, your child will take the PSAT, which as I mentioned earlier, can qualify them for the National Merit Scholarship. This will be on Wednesday, October 12th. This is the one day for your child to be eligible eligible to advance in this program, so please mark your calendar so they are present and get a good night's sleep. We hope that we have many students at Bishop Kenny that qualify based on their preparation over the next few months as this is a huge honor. The SAT is very similar to the PSAT as it is also under the College Board organization. The SAT follows the same format structure of the test, the subject areas, and pacing as the PSAT. Just like the PSAT, there are two sections on the SAT, the evidence-based reading and writing and the math section. Each section is out of 800 points for a total highest score out of 1,600. It's okay for students to make their best educated guess on the SAT as well as PSAT as there is no penalty for incorrect answers is very important and we encourage for students to try to answer every question as best as they can. Now the ACT is a different company. It has four different sections which are English, math, reading, and science. Each section is out of 36 points. There is also a composite score which gives the average of all four sections out of a total of 36 points. We also encourage for students to take this test in the spring of their junior year, just like the SAT. There is an essay section that is optional, but it is not required by many colleges and universities. Just like on the PSAT and the SAT, there is no penalty for guessing on the ACT. We recommend for students to take two SATs and two ACTs by the end of their junior year. We strongly believe that the more a student sees and becomes familiar with these assessments, they will begin to feel confident with the material and therefore will perform better. In addition, you will likely gravitate towards one test over the other and perform better on one test and want to focus more on that assessment. This is another reason why it's important to take both to see which one you are stronger in. It's also important to be aware that many colleges and scholarships like Bright Features will super score. This is where they take the highest combined scores from those tests. Therefore, it's to your child's advantage to take these tests multiple times to get the highest score on each section. The handout accompanying this slide is number five, which provides a list of test dates for this year. It also has the website for you and your child to go on and register. For planning ahead, it is important to know around what dates these tests are given especially since you will start taking these college entrance exams the following year in 11th grade. So as a 10th grader, you do not need to take this test this year. However, we do suggest if you have already done so, begin your test preparation. This will be key in performing your best. Test preparation. There is a wide variety of ways your child can prepare for the PSAT, the SAT, and the ACT. First off, we encourage for your child to stop by the Office of School Counseling to pick up a free booklet. Next, when we met with your child to review their PSAT score results, we gave them back their booklet from their actual PSAT. In this, your child can review the answers they selected, 
the correct answer, it will also show a breakdown of the level of difficulty for that question, as well as skill insights for a deeper analysis and better understanding to strengthen those areas. There are also online programs, test prep guides, and prep courses that if your student takes advantage of and is diligent in preparing, they will do well on these college entrance exams, the PSAT, and the National Merit. Next up, I'm gonna turn this over to Mrs. Harden. Hello, I'm Ms. Harden, and I'm the counselor for letters R through Z, and I'll be discussing planning for grades 11 and 12. As Mr. Buckley mentioned earlier, the sophomore appointments will be happening starting in February and March. Counselors will meet with each of their sophomore students to discuss their academic goals and their career goals. We will discuss their upcoming academic courses and how it fits with their graduation requirements. Course selection is slated to begin on March 10th. This will continue through March 29th where students will uh, be turning in their course selection sheet. Starting on March 10th, in their classes, teachers will sign off on the appropriate courses for them to take next year. These courses will be determined by a student's grade through their third quarter. The four-year plan is a tool that we use uh, in every meeting. This is to make sure that students are on track for their high school graduation and also to plan for the upcoming years. Students uh, for high school graduation are required to take four religion courses, four English courses, four math courses, at least three science courses, and depending on their goals, we highly suggest a fourth science class, three specific social studies courses, two consecutive years of the same foreign language, and if a student is very interested in continuing on with that foreign language, that is something that is highly recommended. Health, a performing art or a practical art, and six elective classes. Depending on the student's goals, we will discuss which, which classes are the best fit for them. With course request, we will look at the four-year plan and discuss what academic and career goals that each student has set, set for themselves. We will discuss which courses will be appropriately challenging for the coming year and if they are in line with the, for those goals. With e While we were, will discuss whether the students are meeting the prerequisites for each of these classes and what options they may have for these classes. If students have questions after their sophomore appointment, they are always welcome to schedule a counselor appointment or contact their counselor with questions. While some students may have known from a young age what they want to be, some students struggle with thinking about their an upcoming career. Students have a wonderful tool to access uh, to help them either feel confident in their decision or at least have a starting point uh, to further research, research when it comes to careers. Students have access to the career interest inventory through their Naviance student account. This is a questionnaire that poses prompts that the student answers that they like or they don't like. At the end, it gives a list of careers of varying education levels to show where students' interests may lie. This is a wonderful tool to see what careers are there and may coincide with each student's passion. It may cement what the student already knows about uh, themselves, or it may give them options to what else is out there. To discover, to continue to discover careers, students are also encouraged to volunteer at different organizations to give them different opportunities. They are encouraged to talk to people in their field of interest, or at least shout at them to see what a day in the life of these people may be. If there's the option for internships uh, or any kind of paid experience, that's highly recommended, and their counselors would be more than happy to talk to them. On pages seven and eight of the handouts, there are some websites that are uh, listed that may be helpful when searching for careers. In addition to that, there is colleges uh, that are useful. And what I've, I have found is directing students to their 
major of choice and having them look at the courses that they may be taken in that major to see if that is something that they would enjoy and if it aligns with their passion. Pages 9 and 10 are the junior timeline. A few things to note on this timeline is that students should familiarize themselves with the SAT and ACT dates for the upcoming year so that they have plenty of time to register and plenty of time to study for those tests so that they are given the best opportunity to achieve their desired scores. October is typically a busy month for juniors. The PSAT is held uh, on Wednesday, October 12th. And typically the NACAC College Fair is either the weekend before or after that PSAT. Uh, we also hold the Planning for College program that's held during, one, uh, during this month um, on one October night. These opportunities will be helpful to learn about what more is to come during their junior year. For the Florida Bright Futures Scholarship Program, uh, handout 11 will show you the breakdown of each, acad each academic award. The state of Florida offers students who are Florida residents an opportunity to finance some of their college, um, college careers with the Florida Bright Futures Scholarship Program. These are merit-based awards that take GPA, test scores, and community service into consideration when enrolling into an in-state public or private institution. There are two options students can strive for. The Medallion Scholarship is an award that offers students 75% at an in-state public university or the equivalent to that amount at an in-state private university. The criteria for the Medallion Scholarship is a 3.0 recalculated GPA, or that core GPA that Mr. Buckley talked about earlier, a 1210 on the SAT, or a 25 on the ACT, and at least 75 hours of community service. The Academic Scholarship is an award that offers students 100% of tuition at an in-state public university, um, and the equivalent to that amount at an in-state private university. The criteria is a 3.5 recalculated GPA, or again, that core GPA, based um, a 1330 on the SAT or a 29 on the ACT, and at least 100 hours of community service. Students will apply during the January of their senior year and will have till June of that year to meet these requirements to qualify for the scholarship. At this point, I will turn it back over to Mr. Buckley so he can continue with the state university system. Thank you, Ms. Harden, for that information. Uh, the last couple of things we're going to look at are our matrices that are provided by the state universities in Florida, as well as the private colleges and universities in our state as well. The state university matrices uh, has a lot of great information. Uh, they talk about, obviously, the location of the school, what the enrollment is, the mid-range accepted GPA and test scores, as well as information on their honors program. So if you take a look at that specifically, you'll see you can focus in on those 12 schools, Florida Agricultural Mechanical University, FAMU, FAU, Florida Polytech, all the way down to University of West Florida. And you, you can see they provide the mid-range SAT, ACT, the average GPA accepted, whether it be for the summer term or the, or the fall term. Many times schools, it's easier to get in for that summer term, so that's something to definitely keep in mind as you approach application time in your senior year. You can see if there's any waivers accepted, uh, what type of platform they use to review the transcript, and this will be something we talk about in more detail as you get into senior year, but many of the schools now use what they call this SSAR which is a self-reported student academic record. So you'll actually be entering in your own grades into their system. Eventually, they will verify that with a final transcript directly from Bishop Kenny. But that's a good thing to know as you get ready for that process also. You can see their deadlines. When you find out their notification, whether they have a specific set that deadline to apply and a specific notification date, 
or they're on, on what they call the rolling basis, which, for example, University of Central Florida has a rolling basis as well. When you apply, usually four to six weeks later, you will find out what your decision is with them. Uh, deadlines for fall, financial aid and scholarship information, uh, also information regarding their different programs that they have. Uh, so again, it's a lot of good information, especially in your sophomore year as you start to narrow down. You want to get an idea where your core GPA is, and then again, what they are looking at right now when they're accepting students into their freshman class. And then also the guide to the private college, colleges and universities of Florida, PCUF. Uh, we have their matrices as well, so you can see a variety of different schools on there. There's Barry University in Miami, Eckerd College, Flagler, Embry-Riddle, and so forth. And they provide very similar information as far as their overall enrollment, their location, what their deadlines are, their admissions criteria, and so forth. And also keep in mind that the Bright Future Scholarship that we talked about earlier is usable at the private colleges and universities in Florida. So that's an important thing to know about as well as you get ready for the application process. We really appreciate everybody watching today. Uh, we know it's a different format, but hopefully, again, you can watch it uh, when you are ready and really take in the information and rewatch it if needed. Uh, as I mentioned, our sophomore college readiness appointments will begin shortly. Uh, we meet with all of our students in the sophomore class, go through all their different information, what their current grades are, core and QM GPA that we talked about, and definitely projecting their courses for next year, getting ready for the course selection process that we referred to earlier as well. So again, we really appreciate everybody watching, uh, and obviously we're always here to help if you have any questions. Thanks and have a great day.